Hi, so you wanna learn about proper washing and drying techniques on your car, in your driveway at home. Well, stay tuned, we're gonna go into those details next. Hi, I'm Todd Cooperwriter with Esoteric. Welcome to our at home series of detailing. This is my driveway here. This is my latest car. Uh, we're gonna go over washing and drying process and some of the stuff that you need at home. We do a lot of videos at the shop. We've got the perfect setting there. Everything's in its right place. But we wanna do this at home like you would, uh, you know, you're gonna deal with the same kind of things. You don't have the perfect setup. We wanna go over some of the things that you need to get the most out of washing and drying your vehicle. So first things first, we want to talk about some of the equipment that you're gonna need. You got your bucket system, two buckets for washing the car, one separate bucket just for washing the wheels. And one of the most important things we've talked about in a lot of videos, your grit guards here. We've got another video that goes into full detail about how to get uh, the most out of it. But a couple other things we wanna talk about is your water supply. Now here at my house, I've avoided doing uh, any kind of car washing for, for years, moved in about five years ago. I know that we've got pretty hard water here. So first thing I wanted to do before doing any car washing was buying a deionized water system uh, that I've got. It just sits outside. It makes the world a difference. So if you're not able to wash in the shade in cooler temperatures, I would recommend that. If you know you've got hard water, I would definitely recommend it because water spots are something that you don't want uh, to be dealing with. The other thing that uh, I went out and got, I went out and got myself a inexpensive pressure washer to use. Pressure washer makes all the difference in the world, particularly when cleaning wheels. And you can use your MTM foam cannon with it, uh, which is gonna be part of what I'm using here. You know, this cost me, I don't know, 130 bucks. It's 1700 PSI, 1.2 GPM. You don't have to have a big, expensive, uh, fancy setup. Would it be more convenient? I had everything built in. Yeah, absolutely. But I can wash cars at the shop all the time. This is just the occasional washing here at home. It does a fantastic job. So those are some of the things that you definitely want to have. And then obviously you're gonna start off, you wanna have a good uh, shampoo. Um, you wanna have a wheel cleaner, but this video is not about wheel cleaning. We're gonna do that in uh, another video. Some high quality drying towels for when we're done. Oh, and don't forget your super soft sponge from Esoteric makes a big difference when washing. So having said that, kind of gives you a list of all the things that you want to have. Let's get into the washing process. Okay, the first thing that you wanna do when you're washing your car is clean your wheels. Why do we do wheels first? That way we're not worried about any of the nastiness that we're rinsing off of there coming back up onto the car. But once again, we're gonna link you to a separate video on wheel cleaning. After that, we wanna go ahead and pre-rinse the whole car, particularly if you've got a lot of dirt buildup on it. It's been a little while where you've got bug buildup on the front. Go in, fully rinse uh, the car first, try to get rid of some of the heavy stuff. So I'm gonna do that now. And typically speaking, I'm gonna do my top surfaces first, let everything run down. Particularly on the front bumper area here, because it gets bug build up. I wanna make sure and give that a really good rinse and watch out for any buildup of bugs that we want to uh, take care of. All right, now that I've got everything completely rinsed off, it's time to foam the car. Now, if you don't have this kind of setup, you obviously don't need to go through it. It just makes it a lot more effective. At this point, if you're just using a traditional two bucket method, you would just go right into the washing. But for now, we're gonna use our MTM uh, Hydro Foam Cannon. We've got this mixed uh, with Gion Bathe, about one uh, part soap to five parts water inside of it. We wanna get a nice thick foam on the surface. And what does that do? It does a couple of things. One, it helps break down any of the other dirt that may be sitting on the surface. 
Two, it adds extra lubrication so you don't do any kind of marring on the surface when you're washing. So this pretty straightforward. We go in and get a full uh, foam on top of the car. <laughs> I forgot to turn this on. Okay, first thing we have to do is we have to turn on the pressure washer. Okay, now that we've got the car fully foamed up, it's ready to start washing. And Wes uh, behind the camera brought up uh, a good question. Say, what, what if we're dealing with coated cars? What if we're dealing with PPF? This process is really all the same. The biggest difference that you have to watch for with PPF, know where all your edges are so that you don't go too aggressive with your wash mitt and potentially pick up an edge. So now that I have this done, if it was a regular car with a regular roof, I'd start on all these top surfaces, work our way down. I've got our two bucket method. I've got one of them uh, set up with shampoo. One is just clear water. And I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna clean out that wash mitt as regularly as I need to. This car is not very dirty. So I can go a little bit longer time between having to rinse it out. If it was a really dirty uh, vehicle, I might do half the hood, rinse out uh, your sponge. The other half of the hood, rinse it out, so on and so forth. So let me get started here. I'm gonna try not to get myself all wet and foamy in the process. But I'm gonna do this in straight line motions and I'm not really putting any pressure on it whatsoever. And usually while I'm up here, I might as well do the window while I'm at it. Get everything all clean, lift up the blades. And here, I'll go ahead and hit that top piece as well. I'll rub it in my rinse bucket against the grit guard. Go back here to my wash bucket and repeat the process. So just keep it going one direction. Glass, obviously, it doesn't matter. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna rinse out fully uh, my wash mitt or my sponge before we go on to the lower surfaces. Right, now we get here to the side of uh, the vehicle, there's a couple of different ways that I want to approach it. First of all, I got to think, is this car really dirty? If so, I may want to have two different uh, wash mitts, one in particular for doing the lower areas that have the most grit on it. Uh, but once again, on this one, I know that I don't need that. It was washed a couple days ago, it got driven in the rain yesterday, so it's, uh, it's not that bad at all. Uh, also, you can see we've had a little bit of time since we did our initial uh, foaming of it, and it starts to, to break down. But this level is still fine. I don't need to go in there and refoam it. Um, it still has enough uh, extra lubrication in it. It's going to help prevent any kind of marring. Granted, on my car, this is a satin finish with a satin wrap on top of it. So we're not as worried about that, but I've had plenty of shiny cars uh, in the past, black cars. You really want to be careful about any kind of uh, marring in the finish. So what I'm going to do here, too, is I'm going to do a little bit of combination of front to back and up and down as I get the upper surfaces. That's going to continue uh, with the front to back motion. But when I get on uh, the vertical surfaces here, I'm going to do that in straight uh, up and down uh, motions. There's a method to my madness. I can go into a full, long, drawn out uh, discussion uh, on that process, but it's just the way that we do it. I'll finish up this top section straight back and forth. And then down to this body line here where it gets dirtier, I'm still going to go straight up and down. And then here, 
I'll go back and forth, get all of it. And I always want to end with this lower area uh, right here because I know it's dirtier. Then I'm going to take my wash mitt or my wash media straight over to my rinse bucket to make sure that it gets completely, completely cleaned out. And we go back into the wash bucket and we agitate it plenty more just to make sure we don't have any kind of dirt or debris that can mar the finish uh, on it. All right, now when I get up here to the door, I'm usually gonna combine the mirror, the window, and the door all at once. Get in tight around the mirror and watch out for bugs because there's usually plenty on them. And this upper part, I'm gonna go front to back. And when it starts making the transition to vertical surface, I'm gonna go up and down. Once again, I'm like barely putting any kind of pressure on it whatsoever. That is one of the keys to avoid any kind of marring. And now, once again, the lower area, I'm going front to back with it. And I go back to full rinsing of my wash mitt. Here, I really don't have much chance of going up and down, except for down here at the lowest area. Once again, I know there's gonna be a lot of dirt and debris down here, so I don't want my wash area to be too big. And right after I get the dirtiest area, I immediately go back over to the rinse bucket. All right, now we move around here to the back of the car and just wanna give a quick shout out to our neighbor's dog who's uh, looking out the window barking at us. I uh, just realized he's been barking through this uh, whole video, but welcome to the wonderful world of shooting a video outside in your neighborhood. You're gonna run into those kind of things. Okay, now the back end of the car. This area is gonna be like the lower on the sides. It's gonna be really dirty. Everything comes up to get around on the back of the car. So what you wanna make sure that you're doing is you're make sure that you're rinsing out your wash media uh, very frequently as you're doing this because you have a much better chance of picking up any kind of debris. You wanna keep it rinsed out so that you're not scratching or marring the surface. As I've done everywhere else, I'm gonna start on the upper surfaces and I'm gonna work my way down. So, once again, just lightly gentle motions here. We're not scrubbing, we're just lightly removing everything. So now that I've got one section, I'm gonna rinse it out <clears throat> and I'm gonna go back uh, to the lower areas. I'll typically start down here. And I know this area behind the rear wheel is gonna be extra dirty and grimy, so I'm not gonna go very far at all before I rinse out my wash mitt. It's just good, safe practices. Tail light. Get that fine esoteric license plate nice and clean. Rinse it out. And I'm going to repeat the process over on the other side. All right, like I said at the beginning, we wait for the front bumper till the very end. Why? Because you get bug buildup and all kinds of other things on the front end of the car. This has had maximum amount of time to soak, soften everything up so that you're not having to scrub against the finish to get stuff off of there. Now, you're gonna have times where you have to get a little bit more aggressive with it, absolutely. If you're in the middle of the summer, you've gone a long time uh, without um, cleaning up the car, we've seen that plenty. 
you're going to have to work at it a little bit more. You may want to use something like a Sonax bug sponge. Now, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that on a highly polished black surface, but it's pretty safe for most finishes. So it's something uh, to think about. Okay, so when I do this, just like I've done around the lower parts of the car, I wanna rinse out my wash media frequently because I know how much debris that I'm uh, picking up. And I don't know if you'd noticed any of the times that, that I was coming out of the, uh, the rinse bucket in particular, but as I would bring uh, my sponge up, I kind of run my hand through it to make sure I'm not feeling any kind of debris stuck in there. Okay, now back on to the front end. I said I want to break this up in smaller sections. I want to make sure that I get everything uh, around the edges of uh, the headlights. Uh, I'm going to get in here any of this stuff, these vertical <coughs> pieces here. I want to make sure all that gets cleaned up well. Rinse things out. Go back to my wash bucket. Hit the lower areas. believe I've got that lower, lower section yet to do on this side. And I should be good to go. Now, if you follow these instructions throughout the whole process, you're gonna do a much better job of cleaning the car, you're gonna reduce your risk of water spots, and you're gonna reduce your risk of marring. Now, in other videos, I have a lot of people saying, hey, instead of doing a rinse bucket, why don't you just have a whole bunch of wash mitts or towel in one bucket, you use it in one uh, small area, you throw it down, you grab a freshman. Well, that's fine. You can do that if you want to. To me, that's more of a crutch if you can't figure this system out. Because think about it. If you took a clean one and you're rubbing it on the surface, and let's just assume for a moment, I'm able to get all the debris out of it in my rinse bucket, we run the same risk of marring the finish because it's when I take even my clean mitt and I'm running it against the dirt that's on there, you still have uh, some kind of degree or possibility of doing some marring. So how I wanna sum that one uh, up there is you don't need to, if you wanna buy 15 wash mitts off of me, I'll gladly sell them, but you don't need to. We've been doing this for years and years. We have great results with this kind of system. And really what I tell people um, when I'm teaching them how to do washing, this system only feels cumbersome the first couple times you do it, then it becomes natural. Okay, so now we've got this done. I wanna to go to a complete final rinse. And as I'm rinsing, I got my pressure washer, I've got paint protection film on here. I wanna avoid getting too close to any edges that I can lift up any paint protection film. Usually the only time we see any kind of film fail, quote unquote, is if somebody's gotten too close with a pressure washer and it gets underneath and lifts up the edge. So let's go on to rinsing and then we can talk a little bit about proper drying. Okay, now we went through all of the washing steps. We're gonna go into drying, which is equally as important to maintain a swirl-free finish. But before I do that, you just watch some uh, footage of, uh, of us rinsing it off. That was some incredible beading action. Uh, that was nothing but Polish Angel Cosmic Spritz there. Love that stuff, and I'd put it up against anything in the water beating category. I geek out on that kind of stuff, just as many of you do too. Okay, so with having protection like a Cosmic Spritz on there, it makes the drying process a lot easier, less chance for any kind of water spotting, streaking, or anything else. 
You can do it with a traditional towel. You can do it with a blow dryer. I prefer to do it with a blow dryer as much as possible because when you have a surface like this, it just comes right off. But for those of you who haven't stepped up to the world of big boy blow dryers yet, you have a towel. This one that we're using our favorite, which is the Gion Silk Dryer Towel. It soaks a lot up. And here, the way we're gonna do this, we're literally just kind of dragging it across the surface and removing as much as we possibly can and we'll have a little bit left over. We'll go back over it afterwards. You can see most all of that is gone from the surface. And I'm going to repeat that on the whole car. Once again, we're not using any kind of pressure when we're doing this. When you use pressure, you increase your chances of marring the finish. So we're gonna do this. Once again, we're gonna start top surfaces. We're gonna work our way down. We're gonna get as much off of the surface as we possibly can. Don't forget to open up your doors, door jams, uh, fuel filler door, uh, your trunk. Get all of the water out because the last thing you wanna do is drive down the road afterwards uh, and have water going everywhere. So high quality uh, a towel and you're good to go. Oh, and if you've read somewhere on forums or seen a video, people talking about drying aids, to me, drying aids, it's kind of like fake news. Um, it's something that you needed way in the past, back before we had really high quality uh, towels, back before we had blow dryers. We don't need that if you've got the right tools. We don't need to add anything to it. We can go back afterwards if you wanna freshen up your Cosmic Spritz or whatever kind of protection you have on it, you can do it after you're drying. You don't need to mix anything with your drying towel. It's not really gaining anything uh, if you've got the good tools. Okay, there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed our time here in the Cooper Rider household driveway, going over proper washing and drying techniques. Now, anything and everything else in detailing doesn't matter unless you have your washing and drying process uh, down pat. You have to be good at it, otherwise you are going to get unsightly swirls, marring and light scratching in your finish. So watch this a couple times, go back, follow all the information, follow all the tools. Like I said, we will link them uh, in the description so that you know uh, what we're using. You wanna learn more about the drying process with the blow dryer. We've got another video we shot in the garage with my ZR1 that goes into more details about that. And if you have water beating envy after you saw how easily this stuff came off the surface of my car, we're gonna link you to that uh, Polish Angel Cosmic Spritz video as well. I wish I had more time to spend with you here. It's getting a little bit late. I can see my wife is uh, signaling at her watch through the window. It's dinner time. I gotta go eat. We'll see you guys soon. Thanks again.